What's up, everybody, and welcome to an all-new episode of Casters of Horror. I am Chris Mess. I am Shane, and this week we're breaking down the menu. The menu. Yes. Pinkies up, people. We're <laughs> going to get fancy on this episode. But right. before we uh, get going, we've got a little bit of movie Ooh. news. We didn't quite do that in sync today, but that's all right. Yeah. That's all right. We never do, honestly. <laughs> no, movie news. So, uh, anyway, uh, I'll, I guess I'll start off with a little bit of something I found out. Eli Roth is finally giving us the film we've been waiting for, Thanksgiving. It is coming out, finally. Um, this... We talked about this one before. I mean, several yeah. episodes ago. Yeah. Nice. Um he, uh, it was the fake movie trailer that he did before the Grindhouse <laughs> double feature, right, uh, right? From Tarantino and uh, Robert Rodriguez, and um, so the the guy who wrote the uh, the original script for it that Eli did, uh, Jeff Rendell, he's going to be he's now written the full script. Uh, they're supposed to start shooting in March. So yeah. I, I don't know of anybody attached to it other than these two guys, but I am, I am excited for this because that yeah. trailer was brilliant. A trailer was bonkers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited for that one for yeah. sure. Huh. Interesting. New, new Eli Roth. So yeah. anyway, uh, what, what you got? I heard you had some sort of news. Yeah, we uh we have a tendency to talk about Megan or M Thregan on this podcast. We do. We still haven't so, even watched it, so we still haven't seen it. Yeah, um, but we Which better we get will. on that. We will. Yes, very very yeah. soon. Yeah. Um. Apparently, it is absolutely killing it at the box office. This is a movie that was originally supposed to release on streaming. I can't remember which service. Um. But it tested well with audiences. Tested so well with audience they decided to put it in theaters and then. And between that and what you mentioned last week of them uh, taking down the rating, cutting some yeah. scenes to make it a PG-13, apparently uh, appears to have paid off because it is uh, not just killing it in the story, it's killing it at the box office, and a sequel is already in development. Wow. So, yes, I, quite the, I, uh, it, quite the it success be, for James Wan there. Yeah, it became quite the TikTok hit, too, yeah. with, uh, with people doing the Megan dance. Yeah. From the trailers, so... Well, apparently that's one of the things, like, once that went viral, that was the point, apparently, where they were like, okay, we need to come in and take this down a little bit so that they can attract a larger audience. Yeah. And it worked. And as I suggested last week when we were talked about it, the writer suggests that we will see an unrated cut, eventually, of this okay. of the first film, so... Yeah. I'm just interested to what that could be. Yeah. So I I'm guessing all the uh I mean Megan's uh, a little too young to be a sex doll. <laughs> so <laughs> But apparently apparently the movie was quite a bit gorier in scenes, as you were mentioning last week. Yeah. So So yeah, it looks like we may have a new uh franchise on our hands, and I'm betting that they're kind of upset that they called it M three again, because now what are they gonna do with the third movie? So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> M M three again again. So <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So you got anything else, or just is that that's it. that's it? Okay. Well, I guess that was our movie news. Movie news. Uh, I I grabbed a drink before we started, and I guess I'm gonna do a little ASMR because I gotta open it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, get the get the sounds going there. Yeah. Uh, nice. I found this at an. Uh, local Asian market. I, I got a bubble tea this week. Oh, okay. Yeah, in a can. So, uh, yeah. the Taiwan classic. It's taro flavor with tapioca pearls. So, if I start choking on a, on a, on, <laughs> on some balls, it's, yeah. uh, we know why. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, oh, that's I'm, really good. I'm just drinking my liquid death, which we liquid are not death. sponsored by, but hey, liquid death. Liquid it Death. We would. I would love to work with Liquid Death. I love yeah. Liquid. As you can see, I mean, look, we both got boxes in the background. I buy, so. <laughs> I buy the Liquid Death just for the art. Yeah. I mean, I love the waters, but 
I literally, there was one of them. I, I'm not as big into the sparkling ones of theirs, yeah. but I bought this one up here in the sparkling just for the box. Oh, nice. I, I gave all the sparkling waters away, <laughs> but I, I wanted the box. So it was worth it yeah. to me. So yeah, liquid death. Uh, we, we might tag you in this video. <laughs> be be on the lookout. We talk. We talk to you in about five minutes in, uh, yeah. which you would know if you're watching this now. Because anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're getting ready. Let's let's jump on in to this uh, culinary delight. That's right. Known as. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this because uh, knowing that you are yourself a foodie, you know, I, I, I remember like as we were watching through this, I'm I'm reading through some of the things that they put up on screen. And I'm like, well, I have no idea what this is, but I bet Chris does. And not just a foodie. We Let's clarify this. Yes, yes, yes. I guess because we better. That is made very, very clear yeah. in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> the difference between foodies and yeah. and chefs and... Yes, I've owned my own food truck slash restaurant, yeah. worked in restaurants, catering, all this sort of stuff. So, yeah, yes, this is <laughs> this this movie. I uh, yeah, I really got into, and the movie that we're speaking <laughs> of, of course, is the menu. The menu. The menu. Um. This film was written by Seth Rice and Will Tracy. It was directed by Mark Mylod or Milod. Uh, he's directed a lot of TV stuff, such as Entourage, uh, Once Upon a Time, Shameless Succession, which is doing huge things on HBO right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, a little show that you may have heard of, sir, called Game of Thrones. Uh, he did several episodes of that. So, okay. Uh, anyway, probably some of the earlier better seasons and not the last one um <laughs> someone's still sore about that and yeah. it's it's me uh anyway uh before we jump in did you have anything that you wanted to say regarding the credits i don't know <laughs> no i don't think so all right well, let's jump on in uh we start out with a young woman lighting a cigarette Against some sexy, sexy lips. Tasty. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. no uh, it's um, Anya Taylor Joy, uh, which she actually has like six names. I didn't, I didn't realize that, but she's like six. Um, oh, really? But, yeah, yeah. But uh, we'll just go with Anya Taylor Joy. Uh, of course, she was in Queen's Gambit, which I finally got to watch. Incredible show. The Witch, which was the first one that I saw her in. Uh, yeah. She was in Peaky Blinders, Last Night in Soho. The New Mutants, Emma, Thoroughbreds, Marrowbone, Split, Morgan, Glass, <laughs> uh, among other films as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of hers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anything that she does, I, I love. Uh, yeah. We then see Tyler. Uh, we don't get his name yet, but his name's Tyler. Yeah. Uh, we assume it's her boyfriend at this point because he says, Babe, please don't smoke. It'll kill your palate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And the way that he says I, it, I like, like please don't smoke. It will kill yeah. your palate. You yeah. Know? And it's like, you're, you're like, oh, so it's not going to kill oh. you. It'll kill your palate. Yeah. Okay. I thought that was pretty funny. And then she responds wittingly, then maybe my palate will die happy. <laughs> and I was like, that's, that was pretty good. Um, uh, Tyler's played by Nicholas Holt, uh, who was in Mad Max Fury Road, Warm. Uh, bodies, uh, the X Men films. He was uh, Beast in those. Um, he was in the show The Great, and of course the upcoming Nicolas Cage film Renfield. Right. Which, if you guys have not watched the trailer, <clears throat> after this, make sure you guys jump over. Still on our channel to yeah. our trailer reaction view review of that. Um, yeah, I. Uh, I'm kind of excited for that one. I'm, yeah, looks good. I don't want to give it all away, but I'm kind of excited for that <laughs> one. Uh, we kind of see that he's a huge foodie. Yeah. Uh, and they are heading to a very exclusive culinary experience on some very island. Expensive. 
Very expensive one too, as he notes. It was. I I think I heard him say it was twelve fifty a head. I, I in, had I had twelve hundred something per yeah, head. I yeah. think it was yeah twelve fifty as in twelve hundred fifty. Yeah, and <laughs> she's like, yeah. "Are you insane?" Yeah, <laughs> that's it, like she's like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah, this thing's good, man. I I really I'm I'm liking that. Um, so then we start seeing critics and elite. People, yeah. uh, pretentious snobs, yeah. rich people, they're boarding onto this boat to go to the to the island uh, of this 12-seat restaurant. There's only 12 seats in the whole place. So it is a very, very small one-night event type thing that he does every so often. But, right. you know, for that kind of money, yeah. Yeah. Um, as one of the gentlemen is coming down the gangplank, down towards the boat, uh, Margo, who is the name of the Anya Taylor-Joy, she's Margo right. in this, um, she seems to recognize one of the gentlemen, and she kind of hides behind a post, and we're yeah. like, this is weird, because <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem to be a good thing that she recognizes him. No. And uh, he sees her, too, and kind of just, like, looks and then moves on. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. Uh, okay, so he he obviously recognizes her too, but yep. or it seems like and maybe it's not so clear, like but yeah. yeah. Um, they board the boat. We see that there's a couple different groups of people there. One of them being an actor, uh, and yeah. his uh, assistant. The actor's John Leguizamo, uh, from look him up. A uh, bunch of yeah, films. A great lots actor. of stuff. Great actor. One of my favorite movies of him was a movie called The Pest. Came out in the nineties. Did uh, you ever see that movie? It sounds familiar, but I don't know. He he's the boyfriend of this really rich guy. Uh, no, okay, let me take that back. He's the boyfriend of this really rich guy's daughter. Okay, and he knows that John Leguizamo doesn't have a whole lot of money, so he offers him money to come to his private island, so him and his friends can hunt him. But it's a comedy, okay. yeah. and it is hilarious. So anyway, huh. it's yeah. If you can find a copy of it somewhere, it's it's worth the watch. It's hilarious. John Leguizamo at some of his best. Um. Anyway, uh, while they're on there, they proceed to take a seat. Uh, they're offered, uh, which the the waiter comes up and he says, uh, "This is a, an amuse uh, that I've brought, uh, and it's an oyster." Um, so that they can try it. It's got little lemon pearls and things like that on top of it and a, a mignonette and stuff. And um, uh, Margo goes to take one of them and Tyler slaps her hand out of the yeah. way because he wants to take a picture of it first. And then he tries one immediately and he's like, oh, oh, and you know, it's like, he's, <laughs> yeah, he needs a moment. Um, yeah. And Margo's like, yeah, it's good. And yeah. she's like, obviously not a gourmand, yeah. such as he. And this is the one uh, on the boat. This is the one that um, they say has is uh, made of algae or has algae in it. Mm -hmm. Algae, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. algae mate, right? So she's like algae pond scum, delicious. Yeah, pond scum, <laughs> delicious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so you can tell she's not as into food as Tyler. Yeah. Um. So it's yeah. Uh, all, anyway. it, we we didn't mention it yet, but like all the people that are getting on this boat are very very easily hateable. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll it we'll get into that, but oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. yeah. They've all got their <laughs> like. There's a group of three guys, and they're just I, I call them the dude the the dude bros. The dude bros, yeah. yeah. Um, that worked, <laughs> but um. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the other groups as as we. Yeah. I mean, there's there's really only two other, I guess. Uh, there is a well. We'll go ahead and get into it. There's there's a critic, a well known, well regarded food critic, and yeah. her. I don't know if he's he's also a critic or her assistant or somebody who yeah. is with her and very much is a kiss ass. Um, I kind of got the impression that he was like her assistant, but that he 
he he knows what he's talking about too. Yes, to it, an extent. Kind of, there's a lot of times yeah. where she's saying stuff, and he's just, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He's wanting to be, <laughs> he's wanting to be liked. Um, yeah. So there's this group there. Um, there is the gentleman, as I spoke of earlier, that recognized Margot, yeah. um, and his wife. Um. Then we have uh, the actor, John Leguizamo, and his assistant. Uh Uh, There's also a lady just by herself, an older woman. And uh, then there's Margot and Tyler. Yeah. So that makes up the 12. Um, They get to the island. Uh, There is a hostess podium on the dock. And she's welcoming everybody by name. She knows all their by name. and. one of them, she's like, "Oh, we're so happy to see you again." It's the older couple, you know, uh, yeah. the 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 husband and wife. She's like, "I'm so happy to have you back again. Thank you, you know." And they're just like, "We don't even need the tour. We're just going to go up to the restaurant." Um, a uh, so then she welcomes Tyler by his last name, and she looks at Margot and says, "And you must be Miss Westerville." Yeah. <laughs> and there's kind of some slight awkwardness uh because it's Oops. not Mar- yeah, it's not Margot's last name we find out. Yeah. Um Tyler then said this is uh, uh Miss Westerville could not make it. Uh um, Yeah. And Margot and the hostess both seem kind of confused and she's like, "Okay, then who are you?" and she's like, "Uh I'm Margot." And <laughs> she's like, "Okay." Um, the boat then leaves. We we see that it's it's going. There's no escaping this island at this yeah. point. They're far away. Uh, the hostess leads them in a tour of the island, basically talking about the foods that they get, uh, how they grow their own food there. They yeah. collect the water, you know, the 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 seafood from the ocean. Right then, yeah. um, it seems like it- um, it seems like all the food, or at least most of the food, comes from the island. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that they very they, sustainable. Like, yeah, they. The, I know that like they smoke the meat there. You know, they mm-hmm. they kind of come across that, but but I wasn't sure if like the actual cattle, you know, is there. But but regardless, I'm sure I'm sure it is. Yeah, I mean, the island's sure. big enough. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. That's the impression I got. Is that like. This is a very this is an experience, and all the food comes from either the island or the water surrounding it. Yeah, the water surrounding so, it and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean the the island's definitely big enough. I forgot yeah. how many acres she said it was like 144 acres or something on the island. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, they, it has their own smokehouse. It has gardens and all that sort of stuff. And we find out yeah. that all of the staff live there on the island. They are not allowed to leave. Yeah. Um, they all live there in a commune type setting. Uh, yeah. They all live in these barracks, which is like those big metal yeah. airport hangar looking thingies. Yep. Um, except for the chef. Uh, he has his own cottage and no one's allowed in there. Yeah. Uh, we then come then to the restaurant. Um, a lot of, we walk in, beautiful beautiful layout of this place one whole side is glass to the ocean beautiful views uh the other view is a big open kitchen which i absolutely loved yeah Um, that's cool looking huge staff of cooks in there and they're cooking away doing sciencey shiz you know (laughs) um i so the gentleman who recognized Margot uh, sees her and where they're going to be seated. And he asks his wife, he tells his wife to switch places with him. Oh yeah. And he's like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, you'll get a better view. You'll get a better view. You'll see the ocean and all that. I want to watch the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, and his wife's like, why? I don't understand. She's like, I, we, we always sit this way. And uh, his, his wife, uh, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That's Angela. Angela from who's the boss. <laughs> And I was like, it's Judith Light. 
Oh, I was like, I was like that is hilarious. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, the whole time, every time I saw her, I kept hearing Tony Danza going, Angela, <laughs> yeah. Angela. So I'm going to refer to Angela totally, the whole time, the rest of the movie. I totally forgot about that because I didn't even make that connection watching the movie. But I remember, now that you mentioned it, I remember watching the trailer and seeing her and think, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was I her. I didn't even. Huh, wow. Yeah. Okay. This is a very um, stacked cast. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of people in this. Yeah. Um, and we may not mention all of them, um, but we might. I don't know because yeah. yeah. Uh, Margot is seated in Miss Westerville's place. Uh, it is very. It is made known that she is seated in her place. Yeah. Yeah, because they all um, have cards with their names yeah, on them name where they're supposed to sit. Yeah. So. yeah. Placards. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, then the hostess says, uh, you can view the chefs, but no photographs. Yeah. Um, you, you're welcome to watch, you know, go on up, but no, no photography. Uh, yeah. the chef likes to keep this experience just here. Basically it yeah. taints, it taints the experience if there's pictures going out. Yeah. And of course, Tyler um, had, had his phone out. Get ready yeah. to take pictures, so he slips it back in. Yeah, slips yeah. it back into his pocket. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Tyler is like, "Oh, is that a such and such?" And he asks, uh, you know, one of the uh, she- uh, one of the cooks there, you know, is that a is that a such and such? And he's like, oh, "Yes, yeah. yes, that that is your very insightful, uh, Mister Such and Such." Uh, I forgot his last name. Le- Ledford. Ledford, thank you. Tyler Ledford, yeah. And see, I have it down later in my notes, and I couldn't yeah. find it again. But yeah, um, he's like very, very insightful, uh, Mr. Ledford. You do know yeah. your your stuff. Um, and he's shocked. He's like, he knew my name. He knew my name. Yeah. He's like, it's our business to know everybody's name. Yeah, yeah the staff and, knows everyone by name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the hostess then walks up to the chef, and she informs that Margo is there yeah. and not Miss Westerveld. To which the chef is very displeased with this. Yes. And he's he just kind of stares her down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, then we get on the screen a moose bouche. I knew you'd know uh, how to pronounce that. <laughs> yeah. A moose bouche, which means one bite. Um, oh, okay. We're, we're going to get on to Chris's soapbox here in a second. No, that's um, cool. Honestly, one of the reasons I was looking forward to discussing this is because I know you're really into all this stuff. And, and like, yeah. you would know, you know what these terms are yeah. and why they're why <laughs> these things are important, why yeah. these things go together well, you know? So, so okay. Yeah. So, he says it's a moose bouche, which I had earlier when they handed the amuse to them mm-hmm. on the on the boat. I'm like, that's an amuse bouche. One bite. It was an oyster. They took the one bite. This to me, they needed the fork, a spoon, uh, something like that. <laughs> yeah. And it was too many components to be an amuse bouche. That's what bothered me. Everything till this point, I was like, you guys are nailing it. But now it's like, I was like, okay, huh. you messed up an amuse bouche, which is funny because in a lot of cooking competitions, and stuff like that. Even you'll notice when they say, give us an amuse bouche and they bring out this to me is what you would call an appetizer. It's not an amuse bouche. Amuse bouche is one bite. Appetizer is something that's a few bites, but it's not just the single bite, but they wanted to use something fancy. I get it. (laughs) Call it an appetizer though. It's not an amuse bouche. Uh, It was a cucumber melon uh, with milk, snow and charred lace. Uh, I can get that they made a charred lace. Uh, to me, that would have been like a almost like a, uh, a burnt, burnt caramel twill or something like that, or a burnt some sort of twill. Uh, however, uh, when I zoomed in on it and looked at it, it was um, very fibrous. And I was like, they actually used black doily for that and cut it out. <laughs> Whoever did this in production... Yeah. Uh, that would not have been edible um, <laughs> for wow, the actual awesome. picture. Uh, yeah. The milk snow was a goat's milk that they had uh, basically dried. Uh, they put it with an alginate or some sort of um, – uh, and then crystallized it using 
the liquid nitrogen, which we saw early in one of the sciencey parts, they were using mm. liquid nitrogen to make this milk snow. Uh, and then the cucumber oh, okay. melon was actually little balls of cucumber and melon. So to me, I'm like, nice. okay, this would all work. You've got the salty from the milk snow. You've got the crisp from the charred lace. You got the cucumber and the melon. It works. Okay. So huh. anyway. <laughs> That's and fascinating. Literally, I'm going to be breaking down every one of these meals during All this right. thing. Too. Okay. So uh, we have varied conversations at the different tables. Basically, yeah. the dude bros, like you were talking about earlier, are talking about uh, how they have all this money. Yeah. They're spending money. They're living the life type thing and how they're all douchebags, basically. <laughs> yeah. And literally talking about how they're douchebags. Yeah. Not yeah, seriously. Yeah, that's, I'm not. That's not just your assessment. That's yeah. <laughs> I mean, the one guy's like, yeah, she. Oh yeah, we broke up. Uh, why was it her or you? And he's like, yeah, no, it was her. Of course, it was me, man. What do you think? I mean, yeah. he's like, yeah, it was me. I was, yeah, I cheated. What? What do you think? And it's like, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, the older couple is basically talking about family stuff, and but they're yeah. very distant. You can tell that they've been together for a while, and they just don't really have a relationship at all. Um, the actor and his assistant are talking about how she's quitting. She's resigning. Um, and cat's going to punch you. Um, and how, uh, she's giving all his stuff back basically. And oh, yeah. the, the things yeah. that he needs to be taking care of in his next projects. Uh, and then of course, uh, at the main table where we're at with Margot and Tyler. Tyler's just in this wor his own world, and yeah. she's just like, yeah, it's okay, type thing. Yeah. You know, it's well, first, before he goes crazy over it, first he, yeah. he slides out that camera or that phone and snaps a picture. <laughs> you know? He does. Which so. is so... Okay. You're going to have to help me with some of this, because I got so into the food aspect yeah. of this that there yeah. are details that I probably forgot because I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to remember a lot of this stuff. I have so many notes on this one. I do too. Oh. I actually had to pause this movie a lot. This is the first movie I've had even when we did Deadstream. Mm -hmm. You know, you had mentioned that and was hard, hard to take notes on. I paused yeah. this movie so much because I felt like there was so much going on. <laughs> so, How, how yeah. long was this film? Do you remember how long it was? Oh, I, I you know, I don't know. Okay, I've got to I've got to pull this up for context so that people can so that people can figure this out. Um, this is this is what's so difficult for me to watch some movies. Where where is the? I thought for sure that IMDb would have runtime on this thing. Um, let's see. I should have done my research beforehand, but you know, yeah, this is um, yeah. Uh, okay, 107 minutes. So we're looking at okay. uh, hour and 47 minutes. Okay. So uh, it took me four hours to watch this film. <laughs> yeah. I am not it, kidding you. Four it didn't, hours. It didn't take that long, but. Oh, I, I was like looking. At, yeah, four hours yeah. to watch this film. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you were analyzing the food. To me, I looked at most of the food. I'm like, okay, I'll yeah. Chris will know what this is. <laughs> uh, so Tyler is really into it. Margot's not. Yeah. She's like, what is it about this whole food thing? Like, I don't get it. And he's explaining, you know, the balances of things and yeah. and you know about the chef himself and all this and. Uh, a lot of what he had to say was really good. A lot of it was just superfluous BS. Um, no. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense, but whatever. I mean, it's it's very romanticizing food yeah. to which, I mean, I do. I romanticize food to the extent of like, it is very, very this unifying thing that everybody does. It brings yeah. people together. <clears throat> it can cross cultural boundaries. To me, food is just one of the most incredible things ever um we then hear clap this loud yeah. clap first course the all the chefs stop yeah and, and they basically like stand at attention yeah right yeah so you hear so. this loud clap and stomp and all the chefs yeah. stand at attention yeah the chef greets everyone uh it's 
play uh, the chef played by Ralph Fiennes uh, from. I believe, I believe it's Ray Fiennes. Ray, is it Ray? He's British. His so. brother's his brother's Ray. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I well I because uh, I actually wasn't sure. Oh no! So I, uh, I. Oh. Wait a minute! No, his it's, brother's it's, Joseph. His brother's yeah. Joseph. Yeah, Ray Fiennes. Sorry. Sorry, but it's, it's I mean, because spelled Ralph, but yeah, it's, it's spelled like like Americans. We American. pronounce this Ralph. That's right. That's right. Right. <laughs> Rafe Ray finds yes, because uh, it's like Rafe as opposed oh, yeah, to yeah, 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 Rafe. That's yeah, not right. That's not Rafe. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yes, Rafe finds. Uh, yeah, because even his last name, if you were American, would be like Fiennes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Ray <laughs> Fine. Sorry. Yes, you are correct, sir. Uh, he was in the Kingsman series. Uh, he was also in the Daniel Craig's whatever of James Bond, uh, Grand Budapest Hotel, as well as the Harry Potter series. Indeed. As Voldemort. Uh, he who shall not be named. Um he, of course, stands up and he says, uh, the thing that I want you to do tonight is uh, I d- do not eat. Yeah. And they're like, what? We paid $1,200 <laughs> for this. And he's like, I want you to taste, savor, relish this. Our menu is too precious for just yeah. eating. Yeah. Um, Be mindful, but, don't, but do not eat. Yeah. So, uh, he then goes into explaining his first dish, which is called the Island, which are plants from the surrounding area on the islands and in the water. Uh, They're coated in frozen (laughs) seawater to add a little bit of salty and brininess. And there's also sea scallops on the plate as well. And it's, it's placed along like rocks and branches and things like that. Yeah, Actual rocks from the Island, he says. Yeah. So, so the plating of it's beautiful. Um, Yeah. They, I mean, there's a lot that they did right with with this uh, with this movie, um, yeah. and that frozen seawater. I was like, that is, it just sprayed like f- quickly flash frozen seawater. I was like, that's incredible because you're gonna get the saltiness and the, oh yeah. But anyway, hmm. um, he says then what happens in here is nothing in comparison to what happens out there. Uh, he said how the ecosystem and all this sort of stuff works and it all works together. Um, he's like in, in our bodies, then it goes back into the earth and all that, that that is more incredible than anything we could ever do in here. And he wanted to bring yeah. that. And then we see a tear coming down Tyler's face and Margo's yeah. like, are you crying? Yeah. <laughs> it was so, so beautiful. Uh, yeah. He then asks them to go ahead and, you know, partake basically yeah uh we get the uh the one lady the the critic she's very overly criticizing everything of course um we get the actor john leguizamo he's talking about the uh, travel show that he's gonna be doing and that's why he's there he you know because he's he's getting ready to do a travel show and he's like yeah this tastes good you know, yeah. and and his assistant's yeah, like, pitching. you can't just, yeah. And I think he's basically like trying to pitch a ch- travel he's and ready food to. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's getting ready to, and and he's here because you know he's friends with the chef. So what better place to start? Yeah, yeah. He's you know, friends that's, with him. Yeah, that's what he says. <laughs> um, there's the couple talking about their marriage. The a holes are still being themselves. Yeah. Um, just eating away and all this. Um, the, the old critic. man, the old man's just shoveling the food in. Yeah. The, I got those great because one of the things the the critic Moon is that her name? I think I don't remember. I, I don't remember. But she's like, it's half great. It's half she's great. talking when she's talking, and then she says something else I didn't catch. But who but she's she basically? Go ahead and keep huh? talking. I'm go ahead and keep talking. I got to look something up while you're while you're talking. <clears throat> Oh yeah, um, no. She, she's like you said. She's over analyzing. She's doing the classic, you know, kind of pretentious, snooty critic thing yeah. that you see d- depicted in movies a lot, yeah. at least. Anyway, yeah. So I know her name was Lillian. Um, 
but I I don't know much more about about I I don't remember her last name. Uh anyway, she was yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. we see this that older lady that I had mentioned on the boat. She's oh, just yeah. sitting at a table by herself drinking. She's not even eating. Yeah. She's just yeah. sitting there and the um Somalia keeps bringing her more wine. Just keeps filling yeah. her glass and she's just sitting there just drinking. Um and Tyler's just soaking in all the food and he's like he's basically he's wanting the chef to like him. He's like yeah. cuz he had he had done something a little bit earlier and the chef just kind of looked at him like you interrupted me type thing and he's like oh man i hope i i hope that the the chef likes me i hope i didn't make him upset should i apologize and all this sort of stuff <laughs> yeah she's like yeah. what for you know and uh he's like well i want him to like us and all that and anyway uh so then we get once again a clap now it's the second course and he's talking about yeah. bread and how bread is food of the common man and yeah. how how it's just you know food, bread has been one of the earliest types of food since the beginning of time yeah. and yeah. and bread has existed in some form for over 12,000 years it it is and always has been the food of the common man yeah he's like yeah. even jesus you know used mm -hmm. bread in his and uh he's yeah. talking about bread throughout the ages and all that sort of stuff and he says uh um he says it's the food of the common man uh, he says, so what I've decided to do tonight is to bring you a breadless bread plate yeah. as none of you are common people. Yeah, yeah. you are <laughs> and not it's, common. <laughs> it is just literally the toppings, like yeah. little jams and butters and things like that to go on top of bread, you know, yeah. like and emulsions and... It's and it's like little, like maybe more than a drop, but you know, it's like they're dotted on the plate. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So it's not like they have, you know, little bowls or anything. No, they just have little dots of the yep. different and a note. There's a note there as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Talking about how bread was used and then how they're not common and that these are the, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and of course, the critic is looking through it. And she's looking for something wrong. She's just like, I get what he's doing. I get that it's a, you know, that it's a, a, a commentary on blah, 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 and all this sort of stuff. And yeah. then she's looking through it and she goes, oh, this emulsion is broken. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. There's there's the flaw. I knew that there would be a flaw somewhere in this yeah. and the emulsion's broken. And what she means by that, an emulsion breaking means that if you're going to make a sauce, generally this is like in a hollandaise or something like that, when your fats and like when your oils and your uh, um, acids split, uh, it's where like you'll see two different layers of uh, like a sauce that's not quite together. You're oh, okay. getting layers yeah. or where it looks kind of not quite married together properly. That's yeah. what it means by breaking. So if you see like a sauce with like a bunch of oil sitting on the top, that's a broken, okay. that's a broken sauce or a yeah. broken emulsion. She, she thinks this whole stunt is like outrageous, but yeah, she focuses on that one thing, like a, a restaurant of this caliber. Yeah. You should not, you should not see this. Yep. This one um, little thing she sought out to criticize. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, Dude bros sitting at the table and they're like, look, hey, they call over the hostess lady. Yeah. Look, can we get some bread? I, I get what he's doing, but we're really, really hungry. Can we get some bread? And she's like, no. Yeah. And she's like, do you know who we are? That's what they say to her. And yeah, she's yeah. like, yes, we know exactly who you are. Yeah. Uh, and they're like. Come on, just give us some bread. We won't tell anybody, you know, blah, 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 and all this sort of stuff. And she leans down into one of the gentlemen's, or one of the guy's ears, and she goes, you'll eat less than you desire, but more than you deserve. Yeah. And she gets back <laughs> up and walks off. And and uh, Tyler notices that Margot hasn't eaten any of her stuff. She's like, this is stupid. You know, you're paying yeah. $1,200 for this guy to insult you, basically. <laughs> and... Yeah. 
you know, yeah, and Ledford, Ledford's like, no, 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 this is this is good. this is brilliant. He's he's telling a story with this. He's a storyteller. That's yeah. that's what he does. So he's and yeah. A lot of great chefs will tell stories through their food, yeah. and she's not getting it and all this sort. And he's just he's like, well, if you're not going to eat it, I will. And he grabs her. He goes to grab for her plate just to eat the little sauces or whatever and ends up knocking her wine glass off and breaking it. Yeah. And uh, the chef notices that Margot hasn't eaten. And he's like, I noticed that you have not eaten any of this. And yeah, he, well, he's like, he sa- he says, you haven't touched your food. And she yeah. goes, there is no food. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, and he's like, well, you know, um, you know, you need to, you need to eat it. And she, She's like, well, I, you know, I'll I'll eat more as it comes later. And he goes, I've made precise amounts that you won't get full. Yeah, it's it's exactly where it needs to be. And then he walks away from the table frustrated. Yeah. And he goes and places his head to the old wino lady. Oh, yeah. And then then walks back and then he claps yeah. his hand again. And he goes third course and he just yells it. Yeah. Um, well, before he does that, we should note too that the uh, the hostess brings over a bowl full of the stuff that the the critic had had a problem with. Yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> you know, a small so, bowl. It's, just, it's of a small bowl, yeah, but it's full of it. Yeah, she says that the uh, the chef wanted you since you liked the emul- uh, the broken emulsion so much. Yeah. yeah, she just brings out a bowl of it to the critic, just yeah. more so, just like he had heard it. That was yeah. the thing. He had heard it and he wanted to give her more. Yeah. So <laughs> um so then the sommelier comes back out, he's bringing more wine. He's like these this has notes of longing and regret and and uh Margot's like, "Oh, wow, two of my favorite things that I didn't yeah. think that I would get. I, <laughs> longing and regret." Um Margot then proceeds to turn and looks back at the older gentleman and his wife and the Angela uh, sees Margot and uh, she's like, she, that girl looks awful. She looks quite familiar. She almost looks like um, whatever their daughter's name was. Claire. Almost, I'm guessing. Yeah, is that their daughter? I think, yeah. Yeah. Claire. She almost looks like Claire. Anyway, it's not Claire. It's not Claire. Yeah. It's not her. It's not her. Well, I mean, it looks almost exactly like, can we just drop this? Let's just, let's just drop it. Yeah. He doesn't want to talk about Margo. <laughs> uh, yeah. We're now at the third course. The chef is talking us through it. He's like, he's like, I like to call this one memory. Um, he says, I have a memory. I, I remember it was a Tuesday, as we used to call it, Taco Tuesday in our home. Taco Tuesday. Uh, he right. says that this woman sitting here at the table, <clears throat> which was the old wino lady, he goes, this uh-huh. is my mother. And he goes, I, I want to tell you a story how on one of those Taco Tuesdays, uh, basically his father tried to kill his mother. Yeah. And was being very abusive. So the chef proceeded to stab his father in the thigh with a pair of scissors. Yeah. Kitchen um, scissors, he says. And as he says this, you see the 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 sous chefs stabbing kitchen scissors into the slabs of meat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which is, yeah, these big, yeah. Um, yeah. So he says, tonight we are going to hopefully bring up some more memories for all of you. We are serving a regular here at the um, the Hawthorne, which is the name of the restaurant. Uh, the Taco Al Pastor with uh, laser engraved tortillas. They had just gotten a laser engraver type yeah. thing to... <laughs> Engrave pictures onto the tortillas, basically just yeah. kind of burn it into there. Um, yeah, he mentions too that this was, um, he doesn't like to repeat dishes when he does this, but this one meal is the one they've done from the very beginning. Yep. Because as the critic pointed out early in his career, this is the one that put him on the map. Yes. He so. says, wherever that map, or yeah. whatever that <laughs> map leads to, or whatever yeah. that map. Here. Yeah, and um, she's playing with that light again. It's a weekly cat light. Cat light. I need to come yep. up with with like 
some sort of graphic for that. I'm yeah. not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to fight it, and I'm not going to do it. And it's going to happen. I'm sure it will. Um, so um, we uh, see that each table has their own set of tortillas. Yeah. Uh, the Dude Bros, uh, theirs has um, like tax receipts yeah, tax records and like transfer ledgers to wire for wire transfers and wire stuff like transfers that. to yeah, yeah. Uh, offshore bank accounts all this sort yeah. of stuff and they're like wait a minute how does how do they have this <laughs> yeah and and they see that they you know basically showing that they've been doing illegal stuff yeah. uh, the actor has uh the like the poster for one of his worst Films oh, yeah. on it, yeah. yet it was one that people remember him from. Yeah, um, the older couple. Uh, there are pictures of this older gentleman sitting at dinner with a younger woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The wife's like, "Who is that?" I, Who is I, don't, that? Know. I, don't, I don't know. It's I don't know. It's faked. It's fake. It, they just. It's all for whatever. Um, yeah. I don't remember what's on Tyler's. Do you? Yes. Tyler's uh, engraved on Tyler's tortillas is uh, uh, photos of him taking photos of the food at That's this right. meal. That's right. At the meal. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So they had photos of him right then from there. Yeah. And the the movie critic or the film movie critic. That's what we're doing yeah. right now. Um, yeah. yeah, that the would be critic. on our Yeah, the food critic. Uh, she has uh, all of the restaurants that she's given bad reviews to yeah, and have that shut are now down. closed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so horrible memories for a lot of these people or things yeah. drug up from their past that are secrets, you know. You can you can kind of see where little by little each each course is getting a little bit more deranged. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so yeah. And personal. Yeah, and people. personal, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Um so uh, Margo and Tyler, they get into a fight at the table. Yeah. Uh, he's just basically telling her that she just needs to drop it. She, they just need to eat and all this sort of stuff. And she ends up leaving the table. Yeah. Well, he calls uh, her a child. He's yeah, a he, child. Yeah. You what? can see that he's getting more and more hyper focused on the yeah. food and the experience yeah. And he's becoming more and more of a jerk. Yeah, he um, really is. Yeah. To the point where it's almost like he's becoming possessed in yeah. a way by what's going on. And he's just getting mean. Yeah. Um, so they get into this fight. She's like, I'm not a child and all that. She's like, you're acting like one. You just need to eat what's here and blah, 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 blah. And uh, so she gets up. She leaves the table. And uh, she goes down this hallway and uh, she sees this big silver door in front yeah. of her. And she's like kind of interested to go through it. And um, the hostess sees her. The hostess name's Elsa. Uh, she says, uh, we can't go in there. And she's like, well, what's behind it? And she goes, something very special. She's like, where are you headed? And she goes, well, I'm headed to the restroom. She's like, the door's over there. So yeah. she goes into the bathroom. She opens up the little window above one of the stalls. Um, we see a man carrying angel wings yeah, across yeah, the big, field. Big, fluffy, feathery angel yeah, wings. Like yeah, like Victoria's Secret runway angel wings. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, he was not in lingerie, which was good. Um, <laughs> she's smoking. At this point, she yeah. lights a cigarette and starts smoking out the window. I honestly, for a second here, I thought, I thought that she was going to try to escape. Cause yeah, like, so did I. All through, like at the beginning, like she notes as the uh, the boat pulls out, she took notice when they shut the door behind them. Like she's noticing, mm -hmm. you know, that it kind of looks like they're they're trapped. Being trapped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, she opens up the window. Um, she's smoking the door to the restroom opens and the chef walks in. She's like, what are you doing in here? You shouldn't be in here. Yeah. And he genuinely, he's just like, what did you not like about the last course? He goes, you've barely oh. eaten. Why? You know? Yeah. And 
it, it's a genuine question. You can see yeah. this. You can see this. He's not being malicious. He's not being anything else. He's just, and she's like, why do you care? And yeah. he goes, I take my work very seriously. Yeah. It's, and it's interesting because he's obviously faced critics before. What he oh, yeah. doesn't appear to have faced is people who just flat out refuse to eat the food. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. that seems to be what is really holding him. <laughs> yeah. You know? And yeah. Um, he looks at her and he's just like, who are you? Yeah. He's, and um, he's like, you shouldn't be here tonight. Yeah. You don't, yeah, he, he says you, you don't belong here. Is that where he says that to her? Yeah. I don't know. You, yeah. He's like, you shouldn't be here tonight. You don't oh, belong yeah. here. And she just looks at him and just walks past him and leaves. Yeah. He comes out and he says, uh, it's now the fourth course. The, the sous chefs have spread out this big cloth, like this big white something sheet of some sort on the floor. Yeah. Uh, there's like garnishes around the edges of it. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, plants of herbs and things like that. And uh, the chef comes out and he goes, uh, uh, my one of my head sous chefs, Jeremy, created the next dish that he is titled The Mass. We then go through the history of Jeremy trying to become a brilliant chef. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But he goes... He's very, very good. He's a very, very good sous chef. But he's not great. And he never will be. Yeah. And he's like, he's wanted to be in my position. He's wanted to be like me, but he never will be. And he just says, there's no way to avoid the mess. Because yeah. you, you try to please people and please people all of your life. And all this, and he says, "You just cannot avoid this." Yeah, and he says he then, basically, like, like when you do this, it it makes a mess of your life and yeah. your sanity, sanity, basically. Yeah. You know, so. this form of art, the yeah. being a chef, any sort of artist <clears throat> goes through this, where it's you put everything into what you do, and there's always going to be somebody who looks at it and has some form of judgment. Or yeah. some form of something, and it's never good enough. It's never, there's something wrong with, and you try to do everything you can to please people to the point where it just takes every bit of it out of you. Okay. Um, so the chef then asks Jeremy, the sous chef, he says, do you want my life? And he's like, no, chef. And he goes, not my talent or my position, but my life. And he goes, no, chef. And then he gives Jeremy a kiss on both the cheeks. Yeah. And everybody's staring, standing there watching Jeremy. And he grabs a gun, sticks it in his mouth, and shoots himself. Yep. <laughs> and the whole, almost the whole restaurant panics. Right? Gets up, flies up out of their chairs, is screaming. Yeah. Except for one. Yeah. Just, just one guy's still sitting there. <laughs> Thinking it's brilliant. And that's yeah. good old Tyler. Yeah, Who, um, whose only response to this is, I did not see that coming. <laughs> yeah, I did not see, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. The sous chefs then take the plastic down that was behind him. Uh, we find out that, that that thing that was on the ground, that cloth that we saw, the white, was actually yeah. a tarp. They wrap yeah. him all up inside the tarp and carry him off. Yeah. And at this point, like the, the, the sous chefs in the kitchen, they all like are standing there with their heads down. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then, like, they're like that, like a moment of silence type thing. And then they immediately get back to work. Back Just to right work. back, yep. right back to cooking. Like, nothing happened. Yep. <laughs> and then he says, uh, I, I want to present, uh, he goes, now I present to you the mess. And they, the sous chefs bring out the food. Uh, yeah. It's pressure cooked vegetables, which they are not, by the way. Um, <laughs> because I was like, those are very, they're Fairly raw and they're charred. You would not get that from a pressure cooker. Uh, uh, roasted filet, which was very light in color. And I'm like, what kind of filet is that? Um, because <laughs> I was like, is that human? That kind of freaks me out. Uh, potato confit, which was the little round thingies that were sitting on there. Uh, okay. Beef jus, which was the little sauce. 
that was at yeah. the bottom and bone marrow, which it was a bone with the yeah. marrow still inside of it that you spoon out. And then it says, RIP Jeremy Loudon at the yeah. bottom. So the, the <laughs> description of each one is on the screen yeah. as they're bringing the food out. Which and I, I have to say too, like with this plating of this one, the, the, the bone marrow is standing up there in the center and the, um, uh, the the beef juice whatever yeah. is it's like spilling out or out, like from the side it yeah. looks like, like blood. the blood pattern yeah. of what you just saw Jeremy and so what's this is, what's funny is the roasted fillet that they had there was like in cubes and to uh, me it looked it looked very um, rare. And very okay. light in color. So it was not, to me, it was not a deep roasted color. And I was like, that is also not, it didn't look beef to me. It oh, looked, yeah. I was like, is this human? Um, oh, okay. But huh. it's not. It's not yeah. at this point. And I was like, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> so then everybody's like freaking out and the chef yells, Eat! Yeah. Tells everybody to eat. And he's like, enjoy. And then he walks yeah. out. Um, and then he says, fifth course on order. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the thing, too, is like, at this point, half the half the audience or uh, the patrons. people eating, patron, half the patrons, they're like, oh, this is all part of the show, right? Like the critic, she's like, no, this is this is what he does. This is his thing. This is, yeah. this is all part of the show. Brilliant yeah. acting. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant acting. Brilliant acting. Yeah. That must have been a blood squib. It was a squib. Yeah. It had to have been a squib. And I was just like, okay. Yeah. Tyler's just eating away. Yeah. Um, and she's she's like, what is going on, Tyler? What? Yeah. And he's just, he's not talking at this. He's just eating. Yeah. The uh, the older gentleman, he's like, I, I, I want to leave. I want to leave. And his wife's trying to leave also. And they're stopping the wife. And there's now sous chefs standing there like guards. Yeah. Nobody can get out. Um, the gentleman says, I'll handle this. And uh, the hostess says, with which hand? Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, what? And she goes, well, with, with which hand will you handle this? Yeah. And he's like, I don't get what you mean. And she goes, if you don't choose, shall we? And I'm like, oh, no. And she goes, very well. Left hand, ring finger. <laughs> and yeah. she cut off the ring finger. And his ring yeah. falls to the floor. And I'm like, okay, so we're seeing infidelity. Ring finger. That's the one yeah. that they chose. I'm like, oh. So they cut off his finger. The wife picks up the finger, uh, the, the ring. Tyler continues eating as if nothing is going on around him. Yeah. Everybody else is freaking out. Yeah, yeah. it's all part of the menu. Man, all... And these people, too, they're like, I had mentioned earlier how they're all very hateable. At this point, the actor admits to his assistant that he doesn't know the chef. Yeah. You know, she's he's like, no, it's like, I'm a name dropper. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I don't know him. I really don't know yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. She's like, the can critic. you go talk to him? Can you go oh, talk yeah. to him? Yeah. And, I don't yeah, know just... him. Yeah. 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 The critic is talking to her assistant and she's like, I think this whole thing is for us. And she's saying her specifically, not yeah. not like the whole not all the patrons, but I think this whole thing is for us. Yeah. She's like, you like, and me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which like, wow. <laughs> they weren't far off. <laughs> um, no. no. So um uh the hostess then approaches Margot and says uh, the chef would like to see you in the kitchen. Yeah. So um, she walks up to the chef who's appears to be plating something. He's kind of fine tuning some things yeah. and he walks up and he goes, he, she doesn't say anything to him. He doesn't say anything to her right off. He just immediately goes, you're wrong. You are not a Marco. <laughs> oh, and yeah, he's like, he's like, I've known Margo's. Yeah. And you are not, not one Margo. of them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's like, we must know. Uh, should you be seated with them or with us? Are you one of them or one of us? And she's like, why? So I can live. 
And then he looks at her and goes, no, we are all going to die tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, what? Yeah. And he goes, yeah. you, you have 15 minutes to decide till the next course. Yeah. You can either die with us in here. Yeah. Cause he, like, he, he picks up on something, you know, he's like, um, he, you know, he, he's basically like, it's possible you actually belong on this side. Yeah, with us, th there's two know. different there's two different types of people. There, you know, the people yeah. who were out there, and then the ones like them in there. And yeah, yeah and well, we get more into that. Yeah, in one of yeah. the yeah, like deep into that here in a bit. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so she walks back to the table and she slaps Tyler. Yeah, <laughs> slaps him, and he just continues on eating. He's lost in his own world, and he's upset because he's like. So, so you got, you got to pass to the kitchen and I didn't get one and blah, 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 blah. And, and so what is it? Is it, is the next course, is it going to be protein or is it veg? And yeah. she, that's when she hits and he's like, he just looks at her and he's like protein or veg. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just mad. Yeah. Yeah. So he's then, mad that he didn't get, he didn't get a special call to yeah. the kitchen. Yeah. 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 So. Why did she get one? So you're, then we you're, you're kind of right like when earlier I just kept calling him obsessive but you you earlier you said like he's almost possessed and that's actually a a closer description cuz he is yeah. so hyper focused on Oh yeah. You know. Oh yeah. On his obsession so yeah. I'm looking at where we're at in the in the in my notes and where we're at on time and I'm like holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this movie's gonna be. This is gonna be as long as. But yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah. He's it's like he's possessed on it. Um, yeah. We see then on the screen it says palate cleanser, uh, and they're pouring water over uh, wild bergamot, which is a type of a plant, and red clover. Um, they're making a tea basically from flowers or bergamot. It's like a, a flower and a red clover being. Red clover, you know. Oh, okay. Red clover, red clover, send tea right over. Um, so Margot's losing it. She's sitting there, she's freaking out. Like, we're all gonna die. I've got 15 minutes to figure out what the hell he's trying to talk about. You know, yeah. what does he mean with them or with us and all this? Uh, so uh John Leguizamo, he goes to the table of the dude bros and he's like, Look, we can take we can take them. I've I've yeah. done this is like like the scene from this movie that I was in. We can go, we can go in there and we can take them all on. And they're like, "Are you saying we have better knife skills than these chefs?" <laughs> and it's like, "I think we could do it." And one of the guys is like, "Screw it!" And he gets up, grabs a chair, runs to the window to break it, and it just goes thong. Yeah, it just like bounces off the window. And then you see from outside, like there, he's keeps hitting the window and you don't yeah. hear anything. Yeah. It's that thick. It, like the material is just, you can't break it. Yeah. They're trapped. Everybody's on edge at this point. They're freaking out. The chef walks up and he has the tea. He has a cup of it himself. And he says, does anyone have questions about me or the restaurant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, uh yeah. wow, that's crazy. And basically he goes into where he says about um his whole life has been the feeding of egos, trying oh, yeah. to satisfy those who can't be satisfied. Well well first Tyler actually does ask a question. He asks a question about the tea. Yeah. He's like, is, is this Bergamot? <laughs> yeah. And, and the chef just kind of rolls his eyes. He's like, yes. <laughs> Yes. He's like dude. genuinely irritated yeah. about a question about the food. And then he's like, questions about me or the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. But he's talking, yeah. then he talks about how when he had started this, it was a dream of his and all this. And yeah. How it became then the feeding of egos and trying to satisfy those who can't be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And he goes, even to the point of his investor, where he would come in and he would just eat and he wouldn't eat the art basically that was there mm. in front of him. He goes, he would, he would ask for substitutions 
Yeah. And then he walks up to the window and you see the investor tied up outside, hanging there with those big angel wings, like yeah. way up in the air. And he slams his hands on the window and he's like, we don't do substitutions. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I mean, I get what's so funny is I related with the chef so much in this movie. <laughs> yeah. So much. Um, then he talks about the investor. He goes be a, being a fallen angel, how he, he was yeah. like an angel to him, but he was became more like a fallen angel. And he's like, just watch. And they lower the investor farther and farther down. He goes, just listen, just listen. You can hear the investor guy screaming. Yeah. And then they lower him down farther and farther into the water. And he's got his arms tied behind him and all the, and his legs are bound. Everything's bound. And they lower him into the water and he goes, can you hear it? As he's down into the water, he's like, complete silence. <laughs> you know? And yeah. he's, and uh, he's like, that sound that you hear is my freedom. <laughs> and you're just like, <laughs> whoa. Yeah. Yeah, um, he does. He goes into a little bit of of the other guests too, like um, with the uh, with the critic. He mentions like, oh, Bloom, I believe is the the critic's name, um, knows the damage that she's done to so many lives, and they bring her out an even an even bigger bowl of the of the stuff broken, she yeah, of the, yeah, emulsion he, from earlier. He t talks to the old couple. And, you know, at the beginning, when they were coming in, and it would welcome back, you know, good to see you again. Yeah. This is like their, this is their 12th time there. 12th time. Yeah. And and he's like, name one dish you've had any previous time. Yeah. And they can't. They don't know. And even from the last time, from the yeah. last time that you were here. And he's just like, I just, he goes, because he was referring to them as eaters. Yeah. They didn't take yeah. on the expense. They just dropped money for the sake of, of just saying that they could go there. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, you just drop money, but you don't experience it. And yeah. you don't really care about the food. And the wife's like, say cod. Yeah. Cod. <laughs> and the husband's yeah. like, cod. And she's like, that was, uh, I forgot what it was that I, yeah, I actually, like haddock or something like it wasn't, it wasn't cod. And he's just like, you yeah. ignorant, whatever in, yeah, because yeah. his whole thing is like he's built his career to where he has basically priced out, you know, he he he's priced the common person out of being able to experience this. And yeah. so, yeah, now all he's been getting is people like this who, like you said, they're just there so that they can yeah. drop the money because they can. Yeah. So. And something we should also mention is that the accounting firm or the uh, the firm that the dude bros all worked for was the company that was the investor who was hanging uh, outside okay. and yeah. got lowered into the water and they watched their boss being killed, which is why they were like, do you know who we are? Yeah. Because they were basically hiding the money and making this guy more and more money based and, yep. and all that the chef was doing was just basically lining this guy's pockets but his art was dying from it. And he that's what he's talking about. He's hes like, he even says at one point, he says um, about it being the death of his art and they were all there experiencing it. Yeah. You know, uh, at this point, the uh, like a, a, a kitchen timer alarm goes off and uh, the hostess, Walks up to Margot and she goes, time is up. The chef will see you now in his office. Yeah. And Margot goes into the chef's office and she goes, you were right. I shouldn't be here. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, you belong here with us. Yeah. Basically not with those people. He goes, you know, the shiz shovelers, the service workers. Yeah. He's And he looks at her. Yeah. Yeah, because he's uh, like he, he he knows someone he recognizing is he recognizes a fellow person who has in been in the in service, the service industry. industry. Yeah. <laughs> Providing services for people. Yeah. And he goes, 
how do you know Mr. Liebrand? Which was the yeah. older older gentleman. And she basically, she tells him the story that he had hired her to watch while he jerked off or pleasured himself. And to tell him that he was a good man. And the reason why he picked her is because he looked, or she looked like his daughter. Yeah. I was like, whoa. <laughs> so he's oh. like, tell me I'm a good man. Tell me. So he, the chef has pieced out that she is a escort. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and, uh, when she says that he asked or made her watch and cause he looked like the, uh, the chef goes, Oh, so he's a romantic. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love that yeah. line. Yeah. And, uh, she says, I know what a, I know what a bad customer is. Yeah. And he goes, do you provide, or do you enjoy providing services? And she goes, I used to. And he goes, yeah. he says, I haven't felt like cooking for anyone for ages. And I'm like, yeah. this is so true. This yeah. is so true. I mean, uh, you, uh, how many times I cooked food for people that was nothing like my original creations. I had painstakingly worked on recipes to make them work the way that they were supposed to. And people yeah. would be like, I just want this and this and this. And then to complain and say, well, it wasn't great. And I'd be like, because you didn't experience what I had made. All yeah. you're experiencing is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. So they go back to the dining room. The chef says, let's take this experience outdoors. Um, they go outside and he says, the next course is presented by uh, this sous chef. And I forgot what her yeah. name was. Yeah, I, I um, remember what her name was. Which is horrible because that's kind of what the whole thing was about. I know. Was about the, you know, paying attention to the... Catherine. <laughs> Catherine. Okay. Woo! Oh, saved, okay. it, yeah. saved it there. I think <laughs> anyway, down here too, but about basically not treating women the same and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, he says uh, the next course will be presented by a sous chef, and he's like, "I have to admit uh, that." Or no, she she uh, she then tells the story about how she'd worked there for a long time, how the chef had tried to sleep with her, yeah, on more than one occasions. Over and over and over, basically saying that he could ruin her life. Um, but she, he made her stay. He wouldn't let her leave and all this. Yeah. And, she, and he wouldn't talk to her for like eight months. Wouldn't yeah. even look at her. <laughs> yeah. Treated yeah. her completely different. And she goes, so this, this course is called Man's Folly. And he comes back over and she takes a pair of those scissors the kitchen shoot and stabs yeah. him in the thigh. And then yeah. he stands there and he says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for yeah. what I have done. And he's apologizing for the things that, and he wants forgiveness for what he had done to her and yeah. how it wasn't right. And then he looks at all the male patrons, basically saying that you were all guilty of these same sorts of things. He goes, I'm giving you a 45 second head start. And then my staff will hunt you down. Yeah. And he goes, go. And they all take up. Well, one of the guys just takes off running. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay, I guess go. <laughs> you know, yeah. I guess those 45 seconds starts now. Yeah. yeah. And all the men run except for Tyler. He's just laughing and he's standing there like looking around. Yeah. And chef looks at him and he goes, uh, you too. Yeah. He's like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. And he kind of trots off. Yeah. And then the sous chef looks at the women. She goes, uh, why don't we head back inside? It's a little chilly out here. And so the women all go back in and, uh, an alarm rings again, kitchen timer. And, uh, he tells the kitchen staff, he goes, all right, on with the hunt. Yeah. And they take off. Uh, we are then shown the sixth course man's folly. This one is just for the women at this point. Yeah. Uh, it's a Dungeness crab. Fermented yogurt whey, dried sea lettuce, umabashi, and kelp. Uh, umabashi is a brined ume fruit or salted Japanese plums. 
Oh, so, okay. so you've got you've got this Dungeness crab, which is known to be really really sweet. Yogurt way is going to add a little bit of creaminess to it. Uh, the dried sea lettuce is what sits on top of the ocean. Um, it's like these little. It looks like lettuce, but it just kind of floats. Um, yeah. So they've dried that. Uh, plus, then the sweetness of the fruits, which I've also salted or brined, uh, and then the kelp, which gives more of that sea, yeah, flavor to it. Uh, so you're getting a little crunch from the umabash, I mean, from the uh, sea lettuce and all that. It, uh, to me, this would be actually one of my. This is one that I was more interested in than a lot of them. Oh, really? Um, nice. Yeah, I was like, th this would be a really, really good one. Uh, so now it's just the women. They're in there, and the sous chef is sitting at the table with them. They're all at yeah. one table now at this point. And uh, they take a bite of it, and the food critic is like, this is fantastic. And yeah. uh, the sous chef said, there was a time when that would have meant a lot to me. And then she begins to cry. Like she's like yeah. actually starting to, because you can see that she's breaking down knowing she's going to die. She's not going to be able to cook anymore. You know, like that her life has just come to this basically. Yeah. And uh, the women all begin talking and they're like, oh no, it's, oh, it's so good. Like maybe they could sway her into yeah. changing her, you know, like helping them out. And then Margot shares her secret about basically the older ladies like how how do you do you know and and margo basically says that yeah you're yeah she's, i know him yeah i know him <laughs> and angela she's just like yeah I, yeah. She, yeah they get it she gets yeah. it their husband was cheating on her with with margo and then they're like, are we really, you got to tell us, are we really dying tonight? And she goes, well, the menu doesn't work if everyone d doesn't die. Yeah. She goes, and the menu needs an ending. They're like, you can't convince him to change it. And she goes, oh no, it was my idea. Yeah. I'm and you're like, proud of it. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, whoa. And yeah. then, then the critic is like, well, and she grabs the bottle of wine and she's like, let's just keep drinking yeah. then. <laughs> So yeah. uh, you see the men getting captured one by one yeah. and uh, the other food critic guy, he's like hiding in the chicken hen house and uh, you see this little door open up on the hen house and an egg come in on a yeah. plate in a little nest thing. And he's like, yeah. for you, sir, it's a special bite for the last one to be caught. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a Pessard egg, which is egg with creme fraiche and maple. Uh, so you're talking about like a soft boiled egg with creme fraiche, which is like somewhere between a, uh, it, almost like a sour cream and a cream cheese in a way, but it's uh -huh. just, but it, it's like a French thing. And so it's really, really creamy. And then you're going to get the sweetness of the maple. Uh, and then Margot says, we're back at the table. She goes, not that any of you care, but my name isn't Margot. It's Aaron. Yeah. Uh, I'm still going to refer to her as Margot throughout the rest of the yeah. but whatever. Yeah. Um, and she's from somewhere. I forgot where she was from. Uh, the men come back in. Uh, the chef says, I'm afraid our menu cannot continue as planned. There is still yet an unresolved matter. And he looks over at Tyler and he goes, you. And Tyler goes, me? He goes, yes, you. And he's like, why, why are you here? And he's like, what were you told ahead of time? Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, that this would be the greatest meal ever. You know, the greatest meal experience and all this. And he goes, and? And Tyler <laughs> yeah. goes, and that everyone would die. So he knew going into this that he was going to die. Yep. And then he goes, the chef says, you had a date, not the young woman that you brought here tonight. And yeah. Margot like yells at Tyler. She's like, you knew and like yeah. hit him. And the chef says, I gave you access to my world for months and swore you to secrecy about all of this. He goes, you belong in the kitchen. 
<laughs> yeah. Stand, rise, basically. He's like, come, you are you are a cook. Bring him a chef's jacket. So they put a yeah. chef's jacket on him. And he's like, look at me. I'm being honored yeah. and all this sort of stuff. Well, and, he, uh, the, chef, the chef notes that Tyler had picked out certain things, you know, whenever he would taste something, yeah. he would be able to identify, you know, so he's like, so, I mean, you, you he know is a about true this foodie. stuff. He, is, he knows. Yeah, he's a foodie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, he's like, Tyler, now cook for us. Yeah. He's like, what? And he goes, cook now. And he's like, please, everyone, rise, rise, observe the presentation. Observe yeah. Tyler, what he's going to cook for us. Yeah, the staff gathers around, all the patrons gather yeah. around to and watch. Tyler's Tyler cook. like, um, um, I'm, I've got, bring me uh, this, leeks, you know, and then so they bring him leeks and he's like, um, butter. And he's like, oh, oh, leeks and a butter sauce. Never, I would have never thought of that. And, <laughs> So he's like, um, uh, lamb, bring, uh, any lamb. And so then Tyler's like, oh, maybe, maybe I am doing good. And, and the chef's like very sarcastically inner, you know, like praising him and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And everybody's watching and he's got pressure going on. He's sweating and he's like, he's cooking this lamb and he only cooks it for like a couple minutes. Get a sear on both <laughs> sides. And he's like. All right, it's done. And the chef's like, is it? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's done. And he goes, okay. And chefs taste the food and eats it. And he goes, this is very bad. <laughs> and then up on the screen, you see Tyler's BS. Yeah. And it says undercooked lamb, inedible shallot leek butter sauce. Utter lack of cohesion. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked yeah. horrible. Uh, it looks terrible. Yeah. And Chef says, you are why the mystery has been drained from our art. Basically foodies. Yeah. You know, like you yeah. people. You know, thinking that you know how to do what we do. And how, what everything that goes into it. And you've taken, you've just ruined food basically. And he then walks up to Tyler and he whispers something into Tyler's ear that we can't hear. Yeah. Tyler then pulls the jacket off and then walks to the back of the kitchen and exits. Yeah. Loosens his tie on the way to. Yeah. Loosens his tie up. <laughs> takes it off. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, chef says, uh, what you just saw was not part of the original presentation. And I'm sorry for that. Yeah. Uh, he says, please, you know, go back to your seats. And he says to Margo, he goes, you come with me. So Margo yeah. goes with him and he goes, Elsa forgot the main ingredient for our dessert tonight. Uh, it's in a barrel. Uh, it is in the smokehouse. I need you to go get it. And Elsa's like, I, I can go get it. And he goes, no, I want Margo to get go get it. She's one of us now. Yeah. So Elsa, give her your smokehouse key. So Elsa reluctantly gives the smokehouse key to to Margot. Margot then starts walking out to go to it, and she sees Tyler in the back of the kitchen in one of the storerooms, and he's hung himself with his own tie. Yeah. Yeah. Dead now. Uh Chef goes on to introduce the next course, and John Leguizamo interrupts him. Yeah, and he and we we finally we finally learn why he's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because all these people are like he was. They were called. They were invited there. Yeah, yeah. These people didn't just want to just show up. They were invited. Yeah. Um, and I mean, yeah. So the reason why he was there, he goes, "Do you want to know why you're being punished?" And John Leguizamo's almost like, uh, sure. And he's like, your film, Calling Mr. Sunshine, which is the one that he was known for. He goes, yeah. it was the worst film that I have ever seen. Yeah. And he saw it on, he saw it on Sunday. He's like, that's my day off. Yeah. I wasted my so, day off. 
to see this film. Yeah. And he says, what happens to an artist when they lose their purpose? And he goes, yeah. I see it now standing in front of me. You know, he says that to John. And it was yeah. like, oh, basically, he's like, I don't want to become what you are. You know, yeah. like just washed up nothing that's still trying to hold on to whatever fame as opposed to yeah. actual art. Uh, Margo then grabs a knife from the smokehouse and she decides she's going to go into the chef's cabin to find out what's really going on. Uh, she opens up the door to the cabin and it's set up just like the restaurant. There's yeah. the kitchen, there's a dining area, but there's a bed in the dining area. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise it's like an exact replica yeah. of, of the restaurant area. Yeah. Um, there's even a, a hallway with the silver door at the end. Yeah. So she's yeah. going towards that door and Elsa <clears throat> is waiting in the shadows for her. Yeah. And she's like, I will not be replaced. And she's like, what do you mean? And she's like, you, you're going to take my position. Yeah. Like, I'm not, well, I don't want it. I don't want it. So they start fighting. Yeah. And, well, Elsa's and, like, and, and she notes here too, that, um, She's like, he didn't tell me about the barrel. I didn't yeah. forget. Yeah, I didn't forget. He didn't tell me about it. Yeah. And uh, she's like, I won't be replaced. And she, and Margo, she, Elsa's trying to stab Margo with a knife. And yeah. Margo grabs the knife and twists it and ends up killing Elsa on the ground. Yeah. Uh, Margo grabs Elsa's keys uh, and... Finds the key to unlock the silver door and opens it. Inside are like articles from when the chef was first starting. Yeah. Um, his pictures, memories. He had a family at yeah. one time. Uh, a, one of the articles is a review by the critic. Yeah. A very, yeah. very good review. Um, it was, there was one of him shaking hands with the, the, um, the investor guy on yeah. the day that they opened the restaurant. Um, and then we come to one that's very, very important. It's uh, his, we assume his first job in a restaurant yeah. employee of the month. And he's working yeah. at a burger joint Yeah, and he's, he's got the biggest smile on his face and he's holding yeah. a spatula with a burger patty on it, standing at the grill. So happy. You yeah. could see you could see he had joy in his life at one point. And yeah. now to see this, you know, solemn faced whatever he is now, just a hollow shell of a person almost. Yeah. And then she looks over and sees a radio, like a CB radio over in the yeah. corner. She runs over there, she starts calling for help. Uh, we then are back in the restaurant and we're hearing the happy birthday song yeah. and they're bringing out a cake to one of the investment firm, a hole yeah, guys, one of the, one of the dude bros. Yep. And he's <laughs> like, you told him it was my birthday. And the one guy's like, it seemed funny three hours ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, they set the cake down. He blows out the candles and then you hear bong, 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 bong. And Margo's rolled this barrel back into the room just yeah. interrupting everything yeah <laughs> and he, the chef proceeds to say he says that he it was true he was a monster and a whore at one time he goes but i can no longer be hurt he goes i grab cast iron pans or things out of the oven without yeah. even oven mitts and it doesn't hurt me he goes there's nothing that can hurt me anymore and um, basically just saying that what he's doing is right. He, he's so callous now, yeah. you know, that, that it's like nothing that anybody can do can hurt him. And then we hear boom, boom, <laughs> and a boat is pulling up to the dock. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. like, Woo! and yeah. he, the chef yells and he goes, clean up the dining room. Yeah. You know, basically, he looks at Margo. He, Margo, he's like, I see you find a radio. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, um, yeah. 
Yeah, so, and they do. They just they just start like cleaning up the messes. They start cleaning up like the blood off of people's faces and all yeah, that. Wrapping you know? the one guy's hand where they yeah. cut his finger off. Um, yeah. Get the chef wrapped up too because he had, you know, he was stabbed and all that. And yeah. So I, uh, the Coast Guard, ha- comes in, and he's like, "Are you the owner?" And he goes, "I'm the executive chef. The ownership has changed recently." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, he's like, did anyone call for help? And he's like, no, no, no one, no one called for help from here. What? It's not our habit to hand out radios to, to yeah. all the guests. And <laughs> and uh, the Coast Guard guy recognizes the actor, John Leguizamo. And he's like, hey, aren't you? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I am, I am. And the chef says, you can get his autograph if you'd like. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, I don't have a pen. He's like, we we can get you a pen. And so he gets him a pen. And so um, he writes, you know, the autograph and folds it up and hands it to the Coast Guard guy. And uh, he's like, oh, thanks, thanks. He goes, okay, well, I, you know, I just, sorry, I guess it was a false alarm. He goes, you know, we just heard. So I guess I'll be going. And he opens up the autograph and it says, please help us. Yeah. And he turns around and he pulls a gun. He's like, all right, everybody freeze type thing. You know, it's like, and, yeah. and they're like, it's the chef, it's the chef and all this. And uh, he's like, get down on your knees. Get down. So the chef's down on his knees and everyone's relieved. They're like, whoo, oh, it's all over. We're safe. And then the Coast Guard guy starts lowering his gun and they're like, don't do that. Don't do that. And then he lights he uses the gun. It's actually a lighter and lights yeah. a candle that had gone out. It's the and one that the chef, when he was saying that nothing hurts anymore, because the, the chef, he had doused the candle with his yeah, fingers. With his fingers. Yeah. yeah. And he relights it with the gun. And he looks at, uh, the chef looks at Margo and he goes, you were one of us. Yeah. You betrayed us, Margo. And we find out that the Coast Guard guy isn't really the Coast Guard. He works with them. Yeah. He's like, he's one of us. He goes, you betrayed us. He goes, you're an eater. You're a yeah. taker, like all of the rest. And then he yells, final course plating in five. And everybody yells, yes, yeah, chef. And they all get back to work. Uh, and Margo, <laughs> she's just, she's done. She gets up yeah. and she slaps, she claps her hands. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody stops and freezes. Yeah. And even the chef looks at her and he, she goes, I don't like your food. And I would send it back or I'd like to send it back. Yeah. And he looks at her and she, and she goes, you've taken the joy out of eating. Yeah. Your food tastes like no love. And he goes, that's the most important thing. It, we cook everything with love. And she goes, no, you cook with obsession, not with yeah. love. She goes, you have failed. And I'm still hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, oh, man. Um, you're hungry? And she goes, I'm starving. <laughs> and he, she goes, you know what I would really like? And he goes, what? She goes, a cheeseburger. <laughs> he's like a real one not some deconstructed yeah. thing yeah and he's like i can make you a cheeseburger she goes yeah and then and he's like oh it'll be the best that you've ever had yeah. and so it's like he has this challenge now yeah so he goes back and he starts he's like get get me some of the beef from you know ground beef we still have some he goes, give me some of that and so he starts making a patty you know a ball he puts it onto the grill and he smashes it down, which is the proper way to do it. Um, <laughs> smashes it down onto the grill. That's the way we did it. Um, yeah. And um, starts making this cheeseburger. And as he's doing this, this slight smile comes across yeah. his face. He does. He starts smiling. And he's like, he's not just haphazardly. He's like gently. He's yeah, gently he's putting taking- the cheese on. He's taking his yeah. time with it. He's yeah. he's making sure that it's seasoned properly, and he's he's doing it right. It was he was back to when he was yeah. flipping burgers as as a kid, yeah. 
ever so and, gently puts the bun on. He's savoring every moment yeah. of making this. Yeah. Yeah. Because he wants it to be just right. And he's he's being the put to the test for like happiness at this point. Not for yeah. trying to please everybody else. He's just he's got the joy of doing it again. And he wants to make somebody happy with this burger. <clears throat> he doesn't want the review. He doesn't want to. He just wants someone to be happy. And he yeah. brings it out and she looks at it and she's delighted and he's smiling. She takes a bite of it. And she's like, mm. it was, it's good. Yeah. And she goes, but my eyes were bigger than my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> and he kind of looks at her and she goes, can I get the rest to go? And he's like, you want to take it with you? She goes, yes, please. And he goes, one moment, please. <laughs> And he goes back and he, he gets her a little to, uh, to go box type thing, like a little box and brings it out and yeah. everything's wrapped up for, her and he goes, and then we see on the, the screen comes up, it says supplemental course, just a well-made cheeseburger. Yeah. Uh, yep. he, he hands it to her in a little bag with a little bag. He says, here's, here's your food and here's a gift bag for you. And he says, Thank you for dining at the Hawthorne. And when she had asked him earlier to make the cheeseburger, she says, how much will that set me back? And he's like, 950. And she goes, okay, I can do that. And so he ha she hands him a $10 bill. Yeah. And uh, she pays him. And he says, thank you. Thank you for dining with us. And allows her to leave. Yeah. Nods and to the... Nods to the chefs that are acting as guards, and they open yep. the door for her. Yeah, and they let her out. <laughs> and he just kind of sits there, and he's staring at her, and he just looks so forlorn at this point. Yeah. like Just like he missed doing that in his life. Someone who was genuinely happy for something, for food. Yeah. And he felt like he connected on this level that was just – that he wasn't getting. And then he says, all right, uh, we've come to the point of the evening where I need for all of you to settle the bill. Yeah. So <laughs> they all pay. get out their, their cards and they start paying. And you're like, is he going to let them all go? And yeah. he's like, here's gift bags for all of you. And he brings gift bags. And he's like, some of you it has this and some of you blah, blah, blah. And for some of you, a finger. Um, <laughs> which I was like, that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, and then he says, um, you represent the ruin and the dying of my art. And now you yeah. get to be a part of it. A part of yeah. what I hope is my masterpiece. And yeah. the staff then starts plating the restaurant. Yeah. The floors and doing, <laughs> doing the sauces on the floors and the caramel and the chocolate and all this. Yeah. And then they start. Like they put on these shawls of marshmallows yeah. over the guests and yeah, a big dumped, chocolate. Um, yeah, they've they've dumped like graham cracker crumbs on the on the floor along with the yep. you know the other stuff. Yep. Yeah, they How get these they... big marshmallow shawls and a little like looks like a fez that's yeah. made of chocolate. <laughs> it's made of chocolate. Yeah, like a Rolo. Yeah, yeah type thing yeah, on their head. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they put that on and. Um, He said, um, the last course is the s'more. It's everything wrong with us, but represents yeah. innocence. He says, yeah. because it's like the biggest abomination <laughs> that's, yeah. that's known to man, basically, food-wise. And uh, he goes, but it represents innocence. And he goes, and with it, we must embrace the flame. Margot tries to start the boat. She's gotten out to where the boat is, where the Coast Guard guy had pulled up. Coast Guard guy. Um, the chef walks into the kitchen area and he grabs hot coals out of the yeah. oven with his bare hands. With bare hands, yeah. Walks to the center of the room and he goes, we must be cleansed and made clean. Uh, at this point, Margot gets the boat running and she takes off. Yeah. He holds the coals out, drops them in the center because you can tell that the graham cracker was also mixed with powder, like gunpowder or something. Oh, yeah, something. And everybody goes up in flames. 
in the kitchen. Yep. The, su- the sous chefs turn on all the gas. Yeah. All the gas knobs to the stove everywhere. The boat dies out in the middle of the water while she's trying to get back. She turns back. The restaurant. Oh, goes, does it? I, I didn't even yeah. notice. I thought, yeah, I thought she had died. gotten to the other shore. Okay. No, it dies. And the restaurant goes, boom. You hear it explode yeah. back behind her. And then we see on the screen, it says s'more. Marshmallow, chocolate, graham cracker, customers, staff, restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Margo then sits on the front of the boat that's now dead. Gets her burger out of the box and sits there while watching the flame eating. Grabs a to go menu yeah. and uses it as a napkin. Yeah. Puts it down and basically she has no regrets type thing. <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of the film. That's it. The end. Yeah. Um, yeah. We are, uh, I'm going to get quickly to the drum roll. What did you think of this film, sir? Man, I thought this was a fantastic film. <laughs> I really do. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it from start to finish. I I have very few negatives to say about it, if any. Um, the, the only thing I might say is, I, I don't want to say that it fell apart at the end, because it, it didn't. Um, but like, right when she, right did, at the very end. Did your emulsion break? Right at yeah, the end. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, I guess maybe I I was just, uh, it was unexpected to me. You know, the, the old she gets away and I, I don't know. I, I, at first I wasn't sure how I felt about it, but I I think the whole thing came together really well. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I I think with her getting away, it showed that he saw that there was still hope for somebody in the same position that he was in. And he saw this glimmer of hope in her. Yeah. And he's like, you know, continue to live. When when she asked for the cheeseburger, he, he kind of insulted the very concept of it because she wants American cheese, you know, and he insults like, you know, the kind of trash that, you know, she's used to eating or whatever. Because yeah. what he said, yeah. what I caught, what he said is because American cheese is the only type of cheese to make a good burger. Yes, and that yes. is a genuine. St- I mean, he really yes. meant that. But but he says something along the lines of you know it would. I can't remember exactly what he says, but something along the lines of you know something that someone like her would be used to eating or something like that. Yeah. It's almost, almost like a subtle insult, but then when he goes in and he's making it, he's just got this, like, like you said, this subtle smile on his face. And And see what's, what's funny to me is being in that world or being from that world, seeing someone say that kind of remark to me, wasn't necessarily him insulting her. It was insulting the pretentiousness of what other people. Okay. Whereas, you know, like I've worked in so many kitchens where it's like you make food that's just like incredible food for people. But then you're sitting back there and you eat the worst crap. (laughs) Yeah. But it's the stuff that all the chefs would eat because you're just like, look, I'm just, I love you know, it'd be like, I love a bologna sandwich just because it's like, it's quick. I can eat it. It tastes good. You know, I'm going to put bologna, mayonnaise, some cheese, white <laughs> bread. We're good. You know, and yeah. a lot of chefs, they're like, yeah, man, that's that's the jam right there. Yeah. You know, it's not all eating high end stuff. So when he said something like that, to me, it was going, it was more of a stab at what people see as has to be made a certain way culturally yeah. as opposed to that is the best way to do it. That makes the sense. The American yeah. cheese is the only way to do it. Yeah. And so I think I think for me, like if we had actually watched this last year, because it came out late in late 2022. Yeah. If we had watched this last year for the podcast, my best of list, you know, that I that we had I had informally made would would look very different. And and yeah. I will say I know this is only the second movie we've reviewed this year, but 
twenty twenty three, it's gonna be it's gonna be have to have to be something amazing to de- to dethrone this movie from the top spot yeah. for me. Yeah, this <laughs> that's just I mean, the truth. <laughs> yeah, and I I said even when on something where I said the Terrifier two was my number one movie of last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, Terrifier two still great movie, still holds that place, but I think. Uh, the menu is probably one of my top films ever yeah. watching um, just because <clears throat> it meant so much to me too, being from mm-hmm. the background and everything that I've been in. Um, it was brilliant. Everything about yeah. it was brilliant. Um, the writing yeah, dude, of it was incredible. The way that they put the, the recipes up or, or, you know, the meals up on there on the text, it, it's little flourishes like that. They didn't have yeah. to do that, but it yeah. added so much to it. And the photography, the cinematography, yeah. when they did that, uh-huh. beautiful. I mean, the detail that went into the plating was just chef's kiss. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I, it, it. To me, it's one of the more perfect films that has come out in a long time. Yeah. I loved it. I, ever I totally it. agree. And I would, Absolutely. I would recommend showing this film to anybody Period. Whether to me it was so borderline horror. Oh yeah. It it was. I I would watch this film with anybody. I I really would. Um, it was great. It was incredible. So for me, uh, it gets a uh, uh, five Michelin stars, Um, (laughs) (laughs) three Michelin, whatever. Uh, so uh, it was beautiful, beautiful, fantastic film. I. I honestly just, I don't know what to say other than it was it was just such a fantastic watch. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I hope people don't think that we love every movie that we've watched because we, no. we obviously don't. No, uh, clearly not. Yeah, the Barbarian. I'm looking at you um, <laughs> and Halloween ends. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, this is a definite thumbs up for me. Um, go check it out. Uh, if you guys have not seen it, uh, HBO Max, you guys can get it anywhere else where you rent or stream from. Uh, well, not necessarily stream from, but rent. So like Amazon and and uh, Vudu and 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 wherever your phone's from. Um, um, bling, bling, bling. Uh, anyway, uh, but speaking of other movies that you can check out on those platforms as well, uh, here's a list of films that are coming up that we're <laughs> right about here, um, that are going to be coming out in the next few weeks to a few months that you guys can check out as well. Dude, I love this movie. I really did. It was so good. It, it was, was so good. good. It was I, like, I'm, I'm ready to go back and watch it again without yeah taking notes just to really yeah. take it all in. And it's definitely it's, one I'm going to. It's one of those that I will be thinking about for a long time. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. So many of these movies, you know, we'll watch them and they're like, okay, cool. Um, yeah. Either I hate it or I liked it or yeah. I liked it, but I don't feel the need to watch it again. Or I yeah. really liked that. I'd watch it again. Yeah. But that's the only context in which I'd be thinking about it. I will think about this movie even when I'm not watching it for a long time. Oh yeah. It was, it was just, it was that for good. sure. For sure. Uh, tell us what you guys think of it. Uh, put it down yeah. in the uh, comment section while you're down there. Make sure to hit like, and subscribe. Cause we haven't said that yet. Uh, <laughs> make sure you guys do that. And, uh, you hit, hit the little bell while you're down there as well. Uh, quickly before we wrap up for today, uh, we like to do a little segment called, Stories of the Dark Lord that has brought his presence known to the astral plane that we live upon. Um, sure. Sure, why not? This mortal coil. Uh, this week's story uh, is a quick one, uh, which is good because we don't have a whole lot of time. Um, this, uh, this is a lady who says that she was a psychiatric nurse early in her career. She worked at a mental health facility uh, one of the residents was an elective mute, which means that they didn't, couldn't, or wouldn't talk, but there were no medical reasons as to why. He had spoken earlier in his life and, in fact, seemed quite normal back in the day, with the exception of being close to seven feet tall. Okay. okay. He had been raised in the Deep South and joined the military when he was 19, but one night he had vanished. He was declared AWOL and eventually was declared missing and dead. 
Ten years later, after that, a seven-foot-tall ma- man walked into a Virginia hospital emergency room in her part of the Midwest and said to the receptionist, My name is Marion Duchesne, and I've been dead for ten years. And those were the last words that he ever spoke. He was covered in dust and dirt and was wearing the same exact clothes he'd been reported to be wearing the night that he had vanished 10 years before. His social security number had not been used and he had no identification on his person. However, they were able to identify him via fingerprints. His family was notified, but they said that they had already grieved their lost son. And whomever this man was claiming to be simply could not be, and they demanded that they never be contacted from them again. Yeah. Um, Marion paced all day, every day, moving his mouth that looked like he was talking or muttering, and no sound ever came out. He also had the unnerving habit of throwing his head back with his mouth wide open as if he was laughing heartily, but not even a breath could be heard. Uh, she said that she continued to work at that job for many, many years working with him, uh, but still until the last days that she was there, he never spoke again. But was this man dead? What what was going on? Was it just the ghost or the shell of a man? Because I remember I remember reading this story. This it was is the a... same it was the same man. Yeah. But he'd been missing for ten years wearing the same exact clothes. That's some uh that's some creepy stuff. I, I don't even know where what to think of that. I don't know. I just don't know. I wouldn't even know where to start with that one. No, yeah. no, no, no. But anyway, uh, yeah. So we got one last thing we like to do before we leave every week. Uh, we like to call the segment Pick or Pass, unless you guys have a better name for it. Still waiting on it. Nobody's written in to say anything <laughs> different. So yeah. we might continue on with it. Uh, I don't know. It just... We need something more like scary sounding, but I don't know. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, what we like to do is tell you something that we've watched in the last week or so, or, you know, somewhere in there and uh, let you guys know whether or not you should watch it or pass on it. So Shane, I'm going to let you start what you got for this week. Uh, Well, a horror short film from Alter. Hey, we like those guys. Yeah. Uh, since it is from Alter, chances are it's going to be a pick, and it is. This is a good one. Uh, this nice. is called Hung. This is called Hungry Joe. Okay. Hungry Joe is about a a person who, well, this lady um, gives birth to a baby boy, uh-huh. and uh, baby boy is insatiable, um, eating nonstop, right to the point that mom is getting sore. Right. Oh. <laughs> um. But Baby is still not gaining weight like he should. And uh, as he continues to grow, um, just continues eating. Eating, eating, eating nonstop. And yet Mom is reported to child welfare for um, starving her son. Okay. And yes, Boy continues to grow. And throughout his life, just... Plagued with an insatiable hunger and an absolutely repulsive stench. That's what the movie, that's what the 20 minute short film is about. It is about mom trying to feed a boy that can never stop eating. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So one about food, having to go with, well, kind of food to go yeah. along with the menu, huh? And uh, it is... Remember how we said in um, the bones and all that one of the most disgusting parts of the film was actually just the sound of the eating? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's definitely the case in this little short film, too. It is oh, absolutely right. revolting sound. So go so in uh, prepared. <laughs> brace yourself. <laughs> but yeah, it was a good. It was a good film. It was worth nice. a watch. All right. Hungry Joe on Alter. Yep. Nice. Well, mine is also food related. Look at us. Yeah, not even not even talking about this prior. Uh, mine is a 2016 film. It's called Attack of the Killer Donuts. Uh, it takes place. I've seen this. Have you? It takes yes. place in a uh, donut shop where 
something gets into the oil that's used to cook the uh, donuts, and uh, all hell breaks loose when the donuts become alive, uh, killing the townsfolk. Um, it, I don't even know. It, it's one of those movies that was so bad. It was good. Yeah. Um, yeah. and really the biggest redeeming part of the whole movie that kept me going with it was, uh, Kayla Compton who plays Michelle in it. <laughs> so I was like, she's hot dude. Uh, yeah. from, from flash or the flash. Um, yeah, man, that was like, she's hot. And I just kept watching, but it, it was good. It was so, so dumb. Uh, but so a lot of fun all at the same yeah. time. So yeah, Attack of the Killer Donuts. You can uh, check that one out on uh, Amazon. You can rent it off of there. Uh, it's it's worth it's worth the watch. Um, I'm sure it's on other streaming stuff, but that's where yeah, that's where I checked it out on there. So, but yeah, yeah, that one was a that was a lot of fun to me. And she's really really hot, tasty. Um, <laughs> I can't. I can't stress that enough. Anyway, uh, yeah, donut. Um, I might go get some donuts. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's it for this week. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't, well, screw you. Uh, make sure that you guys hit like and subscribe before we uh, get out of here or even afterwards. Do it at some right. point. Just hit that like and subscribe button. Um, check out some of our other videos. We did do a trailer reaction video, like I said, to Renfield this last week. So check that one out too. Uh, there's the notification button. Look at that. People are already doing it. We're just now doing right? Very nice. Um, uh, anyway, uh, make sure you guys hit that. And, uh, what film, sir, will we be talking about next? Uh, the next film we will be breaking down is Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Yeah. Yeah, so we've seen this one on a lot of top 10 yeah. picks for this last year. Yeah, I've seen um, a lot of people talking about this one too. So hopefully um, this is not another barbarian situation here. Yeah, but. <laughs> I hope it's not. But anyway, <laughs> let's see if on the next uh, next review episode, if we, uh, if we are liking it or hating it. So we'll find out. If bodies, 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 we want to see hit the floor or not. So <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it for this week. I'm Chris Mess. I'm Shane. Get the hell out of here. We'll see you guys. See ya.